This is a session on structure equation modeling basics and advances. Coming to the definition, structure equation modeling is a family of statistical models that seek to explain the relationships among multiple variables. To do so, it examines the structure of interrelationships expressed in a series of equations similar to a series of multiple regression equations. These equations depict all of the relationships among the constructs, that is the dependent and the independent variables involved in the analysis. Constructs are unobservable or latent factors that are represented by multiple variables. The most distinguishing features of SCM are estimation of multiple and interrelated relationships. It represents unobserved, that is the latent concepts and corrections for measurement error. It defines a model to explain an entire set of relationships. Coming to the exogenous and endogenous constructs. Exogenous constructs are the latent multi-item equivalent of independent variables. They use a variate that is the linear combination of measures to represent the construct which act as an independent variable in the model. However, endogenous constructs are the latent multi-item equivalent to dependent variables. Now you can see the loadings and the estimates representation here. So exogenous constructs are typically independent variables, okay, wherein endogenous construct is that particular construct to which a directed arrow comes in, okay. So here you can see that there are two constructs, one being exogenous and another being endogenous. Okay. Now the loadings are represented okay, by the arrows. Okay. So there are two sets of arrows. Okay. So the one set of arrows represent the relationships from construct to the variables in the factor analysis. So you can see that there are x1, x2, x3, x4, these are the observed variables under the exogenous construct. Okay. So the exogenous construct is manifested as the combination of these four variables. Okay. So that's why you have a relationship going out of the exogenous construct to each of these variables, right? Similarly, there is another set of variables, okay, for the endogenous construct. Again, you have the directed arrows coming out of the endogenous construct to these four variables, okay. So there is also a directed uh, arrow from exogenous construct to endogenous construct. So this is what we call as a path estimate, okay, wherein this is a path from a exogenous construct to the endogenous construct, all right. Now there are two types of models involved in a SEM or SEM is structure equation modeling, okay. There is a measurement model and a structural model. A measurement model is something which is represented by the relationship between a construct and a measured variable. Relationship 
between a construct and multiple measured variables and correlation relationship between the constructs. So a measurement model is something which is related to the construct and the measured variable. A construct can have either one measured variable or two, three, four or multiple measured variables. All right. So measured variable is another name for observed variable. Okay. The only case where you can find the structural model is when you are depicting a dependence relationship. That means a path relationship coming going from one construct to the other construct. So in a measurement model, okay, you will never have a single directed arrow from one construct to the other construct that will only happen in a structural model or a structural relationship. In a measurement model you will always have a correlational relationship because there you want to depict interdependence relationship rather than a dependence relationship. Now coming to the basics of the SCM estimation. Now there are two types of covariance matrices. One is the observed covariance matrix. Another is the estimated covariance matrix. Naturally, observed covariance matrix means something which is observed in the data itself. Whereas the estimated covariance matrix is something which is estimated or calculated because of the relationships among the variables involved. Okay, so on one side you have an observed covariance matrix and on the other side you have an estimated covariance matrix. If they are closer to each other, that means the observed covariance matrix is similar to the estimated covariance matrix, then you can say there is a good or better fit okay that means the goodness of fit of the data with the model which we have presumed among the variables is quite perfect okay if they are exactly equal then you can say that the fit is a perfect fit. Okay. Without any underlying theory, no model should be developed for use in SEM. Theory is needed always to develop both the measurement model specification and the structural model specification. Now, models can always be visually represented as we have seen earlier, okay. So whenever you see there is a directed arrow from one construct to other construct, then there is a dependence relationship. That means a dependent relationship are represented with single headed directional arrows, whereas when it comes to correlation or covariance relationships. It, uh, they are represented with two headed arrows. So while developing a measurement model, all constructs must display adequate construct validity, whether they are new scales or the scales taken from previous research. Even the previously established scales should be carefully checked for content validity. Content validity should be of primary importance and judged both qualitatively and empirically. A pretest should be used to purify measures prior to confirmatory testing. So, some of the key issues in measurement model would be there should be no cross loadings, 
there should not be any kind of covariance between or within construct error variances okay also the key issue is how many items that is how many measured variables are there per construct so this is meant for identification purpose and also we have to see whether a construct is a formative one or a reflective one okay now when we talk about structural equation modeling we usually deal with the reflective measurement model okay now coming to the identification models where we have under identified model and the just identified model all right so let's say there is a construct which is manifested in two observed variables say lx1 and lx2 now you can see that there are four parameters we may have to estimate here that is the path from x to x1 and x to x2 which is represented as lx1 and lx2 and of course the measurement error associated with the same that is e11 and e22 okay so you can see so these are the four parameters we may have to estimate all right where so there are four parameters to be estimated and totally when you see the variance covariance matrix okay you have only three unique terms now the number of parameters to be estimated and unique terms okay if they are unequal it can be either under identified or over identified models when you see that the number of parameters to be estimated is greater than the number of unique terms then such a model is under identified okay when you see that both the number of parameters to be estimated and the number of unique terms are equal then it is a just identified model so typically when you see that a construct has less than three observed variables then it would result in a under identified model whereas when it is having three observed variables it could be exactly a just identified model okay now coming to the formative measurement versus reflective measurement so as we understand in a formative measurement the indicators or the observed variables are the causes of the latent constructs so you will see a directional arrow going from the observed variables to the construct whereas in a reflective measurement they are rather the effects of the latent construct or the manifestations of the latent construct so in a formative measurement error is at the construct level whereas in reflective measurement error is at the indicator level indicators need not be correlated in case of formative measurement but it has to be definitely co correlated and have a common theme in case of a reflective measurement okay so these are some of the differences between the formative and reflective measurement typically we have to understand whether the construct is manifested in the observed variables or not so this is a very important issue when while depicting the construct and the variables we will take up the next part in the next video thank you